there have been some changes to the solar system since the last uh, solar system installation video. So uh, let's go up on the roof and I'm gonna show you what I did and actually what I'm currently doing right now. Here I made some, some stairs to get up to the roof because I'm all, I go up there all the time to get to the solar system and to get to the cisterns and things like that. So I'm running up in the mud while it's raining and having to walk all the way around over there. So now made these stairs in a nice gravel path. You wouldn't believe how much easier my life is. Never actually shown the finished uh, systems box and battery box on the roof. Uh, I talked about it in a previous video, showed the construction of it, but um, I'll show you how it works. So you got, it's split at a 45 degree angle. So that gives you easy access into the box as opposed to having to have a box where it has a lid that opens on the top and then you have to like drop your batteries down and these things weigh a ton so having to drop those batteries down and lean over into the box is really tough so this makes it a little bit easier also all your disconnects need uh, at least three feet of clearance um, directly out from the face of them so this uh, design instead of it being there being a wall right here and there only being you know 18 inches of clearance or having to mount this on the floor uh, this design allows infinite clearance out this way so this is my inverter and this is the uh, output of the inverter this goes into the house well it did you can see it's not connected right now but it goes down to the house down to the uh, the branch circuit uh, panel um, which goes to all the individual circuits in my house and um, the problem was was that I had a short last year as you have seen in a video already uh, I drove a screw into the wall and, and hit a wire and created a short and that actually fried my inverter um, I thought that if there was a short that one of the 20 amp branch circuit breakers down in my uh, breaker box panel downstairs in the house would protect against that. However, what I didn't know last year and what I know now is that standard circuit breakers, the majority of them, for example, uh, like a, this is a 30 amp uh, square D AC breaker, uh, but our, the 20 amp breakers that I have downstairs, including this 30 amp, they all have um, a delay. Uh, so when there's like a short or when there's like a surge of amperage going through this thing, it will take three to 10 seconds for this thing to, to trip at three times its max amperage. So if this is up to 60 amps, if, if we're sending up to 60 amps through this breaker, it'll take between three and 10 seconds for this to trip. Now, the reason for that is because, you know, they're trying to accommodate for, um, for usage, uh, power usage, like a surge, like if you're starting up a big saw or something like that, just the startup cost might surge up to, you know, 30 amps. Um, and they don't want to like not let you be able to do that when the running um, power usage of that saw is 10 amps, which is totally fine for a 20 amp breaker. Um, so that's why they, they do that. However, in my situation, whatever it sent back um, to my breaker was more than 60 amps. Um, it didn't trip right away and my inver the old inverter I had had a 60 amp capacity and since it ex that short ex sent that um, that power back in excess of 60 amps and the breaker downstairs didn't trip immediately it fried the inverter instantaneously which was a, a huge huge deal um, bad news um, so the way to resolve this I found out is to there's a couple different ways one way is and this is the way that I did is to get a 100% duty seek cycle breaker and this is uh, to replace this, uh, this 30 amp here this is an outback 100% duty cycle, 30 amp AC breaker. And what th this is gonna serve as a disconnect between the inverter and downstairs and um, my breaker panel downstairs. So in case there's ever any kind of crazy um, surge or short down there and the breakers in the, in the breaker box downstairs don't trip, this should take care of it. This has no delay. Another option would be a fast acting fuse. Um, you might want to do both of those. Some people uh, do. And the other thing is, should have a surge protector on it as well. Um, I, for right now, I'm going to bank on just this 
just this breaker to do it for me but um, I think that's probably good enough I've heard it's good enough but if you want to get crazy fast acting fuse 100% duty cycle breaker and and a, and a surge protector as well which leads me to the next piece of business that I've added here and that is a surge protector I'm actually using it as I'm using it as a lightning arrestor um, this guy right here it's a midnight solar um, lightning arrestor slash surge protector and the whole thing with this um, this guy you just connect it you got your hot going to the this is uh, my combiner box where the solar panels come in I'm protecting against a lightning strike on the panels and that surge of that surge of power coming in through the panels into the combiner box breakers um, so basically what you got here is your hot is connected to the PV hot all the uh, the, the positive coming in from the PV panels and then you got your your negative here connected to the negative bus the PV negative bus bar and then we have our ground connected to the to the ground bus bar and it's a really simple install um, so this does two things one is uh, forgive me I forget the terminology exactly but during a lightning storm there is a, a buildup of uh, what do they call? I can't remember the term it's um not uh, oh yeah a buildup of potential and I think it's like maybe it's the static electricity like you know there's everything is charged and that can affect your electronics um, it can affect how much I guess potential is in the is in your circuitry in your in your lines and this thing will mitigate that um, again I don't I don't know the details on what that means but it sort of like it, it keeps that it keeps that potential at a minimum um, it sort of like saps additional uh, uh, voltage or whatever from the uh, from all of your uh, electrical lines um, so it keeps that potential at at a, at a, at a reasonable level uh, the other thing that it does is if, if there's an actual lightning strike that hits the panels and we have a huge surge that comes in here there's a device in there that will clamp down and basically stop the flow of electricity completely um, and it's extremely fast acting so the idea here is that it's gonna if that something like that were to happen that thing clamps down rendering this you you got to replace it after that happens it's useless after that but it's gonna save all your equipment hopefully that's the idea um, so this this same type of surge protector can be put downstairs in the uh, at your breaker box panel downstairs <clears throat> they have a flush mount box midnight solar they have a flush mount box that can mount right onto the uh, your breaker box or next to it um, and uh, and then you can also the idea is to also put one uh, between your charge controller and the inverter somewhere in there again I don't know the details but the more surge protectors the better you can't you can't put too many surge protectors I mean you could but how many 100 surge protectors that's maybe a little bit ridiculous uh, but you really can't put too many surge protectors it's uh it doesn't it doesn't do anything negative to your system it just protects your system in all different places um, especially if you have long cable runs uh, my longest cable run here is 35 feet for my inverter and my load center the DC and AC runs down to the breaker boxes inside the house uh, but if you if you have I think it's like over 70 feet the resistance at with number six wire a 70 foot run with number six wire the resistance increases to the point where um, where a surge protector down the line is not going to be able to protect that equipment uh, 70 feet plus away uh, from a surge so uh, distance also plays a part you need to space them out throughout your system if you have long runs um, that was kind of wordy. My batteries are are not in great condition. Um, they were sitting around a couple different times, for one time for a year, another time for six months, not on battery conditioners, just not connected to anything. And it really, 